saw quite a few comments that those uh, look pretty good when uh, small typo. Any other comments on the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. It's been uh, moved and seconded to accept the minutes as, uh, as slightly amended. Uh, all in favor? Aye. That's uh, a unanimous vote to uh, approve the minutes. Uh, let's see, Treasurer's report, anything on that? is uh, no changes from last time. Okay. Uh, I, I take that back. The, uh, I'll just read it off. Open space donation account 44834. Uh, rider property donation account 4125.32 cents. And the one change is the Hubbardson Preservation Trust account, which was Fifteen thousand two forty nine thirty two last month is fifteen thousand three sixty six oh six. Um, there's no sign of the hundred dollar donation yet. Um, Susan, oh, that I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, Susan has a call into Kelly to see. I uh, know. I uh, I get an update on that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I did end up you know, getting that tree down for Susan via. Uh, Suzanne Vida, the uh, and probably we didn't take any money, but she wanted to do something, so I said, well, How about a donation to the uh, uh, open space committee? So I, I did uh, just get a check from her today. So, oh, you got it? Okay, yeah, yeah, so that was a I didn't bring it with me tonight. It was, she made a $50 donation for that. Yeah, she was waiting until her social security check came <laughs> in. <laughs> so. Okay, um, um, you just need to. Should I just give it to Susan? No, you, if you're going to be, are you okay. going to be down here anyway, or whenever, whenever, either way is fine. So how do I get it into one of our accounts? You need to just hand it to whoever happens to be here, Nate or the um, mm -hmm. treasurer is here. Um, you can go to them and say uh, it's for the Hubberson. Do they call that account Hubberson donation account? Was the one with 44834? Yes, yeah. That's okay. all. You just need to let them know. That's I'll what it. it's called. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll, I'll send you the. Uh, okay. I'll send you the account number. The account yeah. Put it on the check with a yeah. sticky. Yeah. <laughs> the account number uh, is uh, two six one two. Open space expense donations. Two six one two. That's that's an abbreviation. Okay, um, yeah, that'd be good to have my to do that. Uh, let's see, we, we did that. Uh, minutes, oh, we already did the minutes, treasurer's report. Uh, let's skip to uh, our guest tonight, who's uh, Trisha, and she's got uh, something she'd like to discuss with the uh, committee. That's like that, so I have apologize. <laughs> Um, so I have an idea of doing a storybook walk pairing with the library and open space. Um, it would be a, as of right now, it would be a mobile storybook walk. So what that means is that it could be picked up and moved somewhere else. It could move to a new trail. It could move to a new home eventually. Um, so, uh, when, if you guys are okay with that, we would ask that you help us pick a trail um, here in Hubbardston that is easy for families to do, and I know we've got quite a few. Um, well, it, <laughs> um, a lot of our families that do come to story time, they hike religiously. Um, they hike Wachusett with the kids all the time. They usually go in packs right after story time. They go up to Wachusett to hike the mountain or Mount Jeff. Um, so what it would be is it would be a story book pages on in galvanized metal buckets because it's got to move 
um, in um, on, in the galvanized buckets is concrete and a pole. The uh, pages would be attached to the pole um, and they would line up in sequential order of the book. So as the kids are walking, they're reading along to the story. Um, and then eventually, if this is a really big hit um, with families and kids, there are other towns that do a storybook trail. They have a trail that open space and the library pair together. Um, and that becomes the storybook trail. It's got a big, beautiful sign that says, Welcome to the Storybook Trail per Hubbardston Public Library and Open Space Committee. And it's more of a permanent, their cases that get locked in, in and out. That um, they have a, acrylic tops, black metal cases with poles um, that are permanently attached. And then you would change out the story per every month with a new story. Um, as of right now, we're not. The only thing we're asking for open space is yes or no, and um, there you guys wouldn't need to pay for anything. Um, the story book walk, the first one is the pools, the buckets, everything has been generously, the do funds have been generously donated to the library. Because um, once a girl dad, always a girl dad, and I told my dad <laughs> that that's something I wanted for my birthday, so <laughs> he was like, okay, sounds great. Um, I got the idea from actually a hike in Lake Placid. Lake Placid does these on the regular. So the storybook would change every month. We could move the storybook walk to different trails that you guys would choose and say, hey, these trails would be great to get families out on or become more popular or get more foot traffic on. The other thing that I would tie into this is it is Smoky Bears. 80th birthday this year and they have the state has asked the libraries to pair with them to help celebrate Smokey the Bear Smokey Bear not Smokey the Bear Smokey Bear um, pair with them and uh, get kids out into state forests and state parks we don't have currently have a state park here in Hubbardson but we do have state forests and a lot of them as I found out through the master plan and the open space plan so I did read it all. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I brought some of the books that I was thinking about um, doing. So this is The Little Guys. It's about little guys in the forest. They collect things. They think that they are mighty and they don't need help. And it's just a fun little story. The other one is, uh, uh, presented to me by Steph was Compost Stew, which is all about... Um, composting and making the earth healthy again. The other one I love is Alphabet Tree. Um, and it's about a bumblebee and a tree that has the alphabet and then the, as the wind shakes, the alphabet falls out. Hurry up and slow down. And then my personal new favorite is The Quiet Forest. It's about a quiet forest and then all of a sudden, it's not so quiet anymore. And there's chaos. If any of you guys have ever been to Storytime, you know that the library goes from being very quiet to very loud for about two hours and then very quiet again. Here are the books if you guys want to take a look. So, so the logistics of this is that you cart a bunch of bucket posts out there for the day of the event? For the day of the event or for a, for a week or so to give parents and families a chance to get out there and see it. Um, I know that the MOC does these at the rec field uh, every once in a blue moon. Um, I did talk to the MOC in Westminster because they do it at the Westminster Farmers Market sometimes. I asked her about vandalism and other, other things. She yeah. said that it's not a huge issue that they have run into because she's like, especially if you're proposing to put it on a trail, the people who are out there are doing something that they're supposed to be doing, not doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. You do, you will come across vandalism, but she said with the buckets and the poles and the story, it's less likely that more damage will be, uh, happen from vandals and stuff like that. But um, if the buckets go missing, the buckets go missing and we just, but I don't think someone's gonna steal a bucket full of concrete with a pole in it. But you know, you know, I, the weird things have happened in this town, so I'm just not gonna put it past it. Yes. Sorry, I, I'm still trying to understand. Mm -hmm. the mechanics to the, 
So you've got a galvanized pail with concrete and a pole in it. And mm -hmm. what's on top of the pole? The, the pole is just, um, it's... Like a garden stake. Like a garden stake so right. that I can zip tie the um, pages, the laminated pages to the pole. So there'd be like one page per pole. One page per pole as you walk along the trail. Sure, okay. So it's a burma shave campaign for the kids' book. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But you, but you laminate, you copy yep. and laminate. Yep. So the um, <laughs> book pages will be professionally imprinted and then laminated so that they're as wow. colorful as possible. So these are just photographs of those pages themselves? They're actually, so this was actually really popular during COVID because the only option for a lot of things was outdoors. Um, some of the publishing companies will print out exactly this. So it's not a photocopy, it's actually the artwork, the actual page, just like this, like you will have the story open as you walk by. So this is what you would see. So It'd be blown up a little bit bigger than the actual book. So, um, you know, you've got a little guy on the ground to a taller child or an adult. Um, as, so as you walk along. Does it have like a rigid backing then? Yep, yep. Okay. It would, I would fashion probably <coughs> uh, plywood just to make it stronger. Also because the winds are so great here in Hubbard. <coughs> I've seen it at um, Susie Feldman. Have you been, you've been to her property? Yeah. Over in, they, they, they do this. Tower well. Hill does it as well. <coughs> I've seen a lot of them online. A lot of the, um, <coughs> the land trusts are, are starting to. East Guam and Land Trust has already done that, and yeah. I just saw <coughs> more robust materials come in, the acrylic that you can mm -hmm. slip in and protect them yep. and change them. Yep. Um, so you might want to contact Cynthia Henshaw, the executive <coughs> director. Uh, I, I saw the materials going out just a week ago. Um, about how many buckets do you need? I mean, I'm just thinking about the... <coughs> relative to maybe a trail suggestion or something? Um, so it depends on how many pages I've got. Um, so I would do anywhere between six to because <coughs> this would count as a whole page. Yeah. So um, and then every, story is good. every story has it a, a different. Yeah. So um, we would make sure that there is more than enough. Well, I think this is very cool. I, I, I love the idea. Um, and I think the obvious choice for the first first trail would be the Parsons Road. Just park park here at the school and walk them down the sidewalk and up Parsons Road and out the trail. <laughs> Where's that? Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with what you're talking about. Cassie's Garden. Cassie's Garden. Yeah. Oh, down oh, the hill oh. on Elm Street, where Elm Street occurs to the Oh, that part. Left. Yeah. Yep. When you go to the right, that's the person. Mm -hmm. Okay. It does start out through fish and game mm -hmm. land. But um, I, I spoke don't. to DCR about this um, mm -hmm. because obviously a lot of land here in Hubberson, as I found out, is in chapter. And he was actually quite excited about it. He said that the whole part of a lot of land that is in chapter, they have this whole arts and cultural. Um, Some land in chapter that he says here in Massachusetts, they people put sculpture gardens in, and they have this whole drive for arts and culture, get people out into the forest, do that kind of thing. And he said that this is something common that they see, um, especially in some of the state forests. They do these storybook walks. Um, some of the bigger libraries do them, um, and uh, he said that that was more than more than okay. Um, and he said that if uh, I needed explicit permission, they have like a blanket letter that they send <coughs> to say that it's okay. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the options are pretty much unlimited <laughs> as yeah. to where you can do this. <laughs> right, yeah. I just, um, I want, I, Have you been any place in town that you think would be I'm, a good spot? Um, I, I did do the Malone. Uh, how, what, what are we talking about for parking needs? Parking yeah. needs, I'm... Um, it's not an event. It's not an event. No, it was we would tell just tell people there's a storybook trail and they just they go and do just it. Oh, 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 oh,
Yeah. We so could do like a kickoff money. for the first the first time we ever do it. We could do an event. That's more. I would be more than happy to plan something like that. Um, but yeah, we would just. It's just go and do it. Like uh, it's okay. open. It's I available to you. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, how long would it take? You you said pack up here at the school. Is there a sidewalk? Well, it doesn't. That doesn't. Yeah, really that doesn't matter, matter for, now. Well, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, because people would just park down there. Yeah. They're just going. What's uh What's the duration of that walk? You know, I obviously have been down there, but I mean to to get out to the Parsons Trail and then back. It's yeah. it's, it's about thirty to forty minutes round trip. Yeah, but right from the parking lot there, not from here. From the parking lot. Yeah. 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 Fishing game. That, yeah, lot. they're gonna stop and read. Yeah, I mean it's like 15, 15 minute walk in, fifteen minute walk out. <laughs> what do you think? What's the age? Target? The age is that's the best part is the age is unlimited because you've got you've got my kids who are much much older, um, that enjoy it. The ones that we do see at Tower Hill and um, the ones we've come across like the one in Lake Placid, we came across it in the middle of the trail, didn't even know it was there, and oh, hi, there's a storybook in the middle of the trail. Okay. Um, there's We've seen some in Maine, um, but I also have the younger kids that come to my story time that hike with their parents on the regular. I mean, I've got babies that go in backpacks, so. Can we come? Sure. <clears throat> the, kids are, the kids are infectious, so. When, when do you think um, you'd wanna do this? Um, I would like to do it at the end of June into July, if that's okay. That's when um, kids are getting out of school. We can really broadcast it. We've got parents looking for things to do with the kids during the summer. Um, the school district did not get the STEM grant this year, so I know we a lot of parents are looking for things to do with their kids because the STEM camp isn't an option this year. So. One of the good things about Malone is that there's two very short loops mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. exist now. <clears throat> it's gorgeous. And you can, because there's two loops, you can make a third loop that's both of them, and then you can make bigger loops. And if we wanted to start with a short distance, you know, you could just go basically around the field that. Yeah, behind the chimney stuff. around and right back in. Around <coughs> no, Malone. 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 I mean, uh, behind, uh, between the pines. Yeah, and then turn left right and down. just go around the field at Rick and Steph mode. Yeah, but I was thinking just another one too, if you go b between the pines and around, go past that first return path, mm -hmm. and then come out to the intersection point and then back to the field yep. or something. So there's a couple options. Here. Right. I mean, the, the benefit of that is it's uh, literally a minute before you could start having the story told. So I think it might be a little more convenient dependent upon the age of the kids and stuff like that and the time uh, folks have got. And the poor volunteers. The younger kids to. may take a while to get out to the to, to passions, but either one of them would be uh, okay with me. I don't know. Yeah. I would go along. Yeah, I would too. Because Parsons is, you know, one way in, one way back kind of thing. And well, then they can see the garden that's there, butterfly garden. It's the ATVs have it destroyed. <laughs> and it's a good way to get people out from alone so when that yeah. if that trail is going to be put in people will know what you're talking about mm -hmm. yeah and, uh, <coughs> we're talking about this uh, uh, making uh, Malone a focal point by the the new trail activity mm -hmm. uh, this would be a also a focal point for the younger kids and a very amenable trail at the same time so great idea and Malone is going to be ADA compliant, right? That's, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's the, the, that's oh, the whole oh, oh, yeah. the well, ultimately, <laughs> ultimately. Well, not by June. Be, yeah. Not yeah. by June. It'll be very amenable. That's <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> Better put it. Amenable. Like that. It'd be, it'd be the easiest trail that we have in our system to walk. Yeah. Perfect. Is there, can you park along the road on Malone? Is it wide enough, solid enough? Mm, in spots, not in spots. Okay. So if you were thinking about an event, then think about parking. Yeah. That's all. Hopefully yeah, people the, would carpool. The, yeah. the parking of Malone is, it isn't huge, but it's as good as anywhere. Yeah, I was going to say. Probably, it's probably a solid yeah. dozen cars. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, you just maybe ask people okay. to carpool. Yeah. They could park it. Or not Jeff and carpool. If, if, it's, if it's a large room. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, do you, well, think about how many kids I, I fed my car on a regular basis. Like, are, are you going to need help getting these? Oh heavy no, I have of... two very voluntold strapping young <laughs> men <laughs> really carrying the buckets out onto the trails for. Are, with are they me. related somehow? Uh, by marriage, and because he has no other choice, and the little sister he never wanted but got by marriage. <laughs> Okay, sounds great. Do we want to have a, do we need a vote on this? Sure. Uh, anybody want to make a proposal? So moved. To, <laughs> to, to, <laughs> so moved. <laughs> just to support the, to, uh, uh, to the support story. the storybook uh, walk. Trail. Trail. It, uh, and with Malone Road being the venue. With Malone Road being the venue. <laughs> Second. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Unanimous. There you go. Oh, thank you. Oh, this is good. Now save the little guys. I will for save me. the little guys for you, and then um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the quiet forest first. I, I don't want to jump ahead, Bob, but Trisha, if you could, do you have a minute? Of course and I do. I have my schedule for you guys tonight. Item. And so I'm collaborating with Trisha and the East Quabbin Land Trust to do a virtual tour of Hidden Garden at, at the library during one of her story times. Did I get that right? Yes. It'll no. be like a show and tell. So rather than dragging a bunch of children up there during the buggy time, and I know they get in backpacks and parents drag them all over, but it is a little bit of a walk. And so we could do it inside and expose them, bring the meadow, the preserve to them versus them going there. But I already have a number of uh, bones and skulls and snake skins and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, deer sheds. Uh, that's that, not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, got to watch yourself. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that up while Trisha was here and uh, I've been given the go-ahead from Cynthia, the executive uh, director of the Land Trust, and Chris, the director of the library, to work directly with Trish and kick this thing off. So hopefully open space will support that also. I don't think there's any reason for a vote per se, but wanted to expose the committee to one of these efforts that's going on. Anything Thank I you. can drag into that library that probably does not belong there, I'm going to do it. Like a llama or chickens on Monday. So. <laughs> Or lobsters. I brought lobsters to story time once. Live ones. It's good. And who ate them? I did. Oh. Mm -hmm. Much next, later. Next time I'm coming. <laughs> okay. With a lobster boil. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Thanks, Trish. Oh, okay. You guys need me. You know where to find me. In the library or in the basement. <laughs> Have a good night. You too. You too. Show and ask you one more. Yes. Go ahead. Um, oh, okay. that was convenient. Yeah. Oh, What's next? <laughs> 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 well, that's next. Uh, well, I can jump to the next one. Uh, old business uh, uh, land priority uh, group. Um, we did meet with. Um, Anna and uh, Sarah, Anna Wilkins and Sarah Wells from uh, North County and Mount Grace Land Trust, respectively. I just talked about uh, the project that we're uh, engaged in, the, the tool, the land prioritization tool, and um, and just uh, discuss a little bit about next steps. And it's, uh, uh, we need to do uh, a little bit more property evaluations. But then uh, trying to make uh, contacts. So some of the some of the property with the, some of the challenges that we've got are uh, that a lot of the properties that we under consideration are uh, everybody's out of town, uh, ranging from Tennessee to New York State to Indiana. Uh, Indiana, <laughs> um, and none none of them, the vast majority of them, I don't think there's any that uh, that live in. 
town. So it's a challenge to get through and uh, make uh, communication. So that's uh, that's the status of where on right now and we'll have more to report on that uh, when the committee's going to, uh, the group is going to meet again uh, uh, next week and uh, discuss our next steps. So that's what's happening with that. Um, the town master I said, uh, what's happening with that? Does anybody know like the master plan and the no. feedback? And I haven't heard anything. And I sent a note to Chris because we sent I sent him you know that sort of a conglomeration of comments from the various people that we had here, most of which was started with Mark, and I even heard back from him. So all right, I'll just uh, follow up with Chris again on that. Uh, uh, open space uh, recreation plan status is that. I haven't heard anything about that either. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I made no progress this month, and haven't haven't started nagging the various reviewers because I haven't heard anything from any of, of them either. Okay, and um, relative to their heard their comments and feedback on their comments, uh, the, the, what's the status of the? She had uh, several comments, most of which seemed like pretty simple to. Results. Which I was going to write up, but which I have not. Okay. At this point. <laughs> okay, so we're all. And there's no urgency. There's no real urgency. We're, I mean, we're okay for the grant status, which is the critical thing. Yes. And so there's yeah. not a real critical That took thing. the pressure off, which was a, yeah. bad, a bad thing in a, in a sense. Because <laughs> <Well, laughs> I would still like to get it out of my life. but We all know the feeling. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and probably nothing on uh, mass trails. Um, I, I had a conversation with Amanda Lewis yesterday. I uh, was very encouraged, but the formal notifications haven't gone out yet. Okay. Who is, who is she? The head of the mass trails program. The person that notifies, right? <laughs> Citizens Academy that uh, pitch I put together for that, I finally, uh, the pressure was off because I made the pitch, but, it's like, uh, but I finally did get uh, uh, a, a, a set of uh, pictures and uh, incorporated it. Several people said you need to add a few more pictures in it, so I tried to get a some sort of a suite of pictures that I did put into it that reflected doing work and the trails and people enjoying them and things like that. And I sent that to Trisha's and she was waiting for that because there were probably four or five people that wanted to get a copy of that. So, um, let's see, since Tim's back, we'll go to Hubbardson Hikers. Yep, we had, um 12 people for the Mike stole that walk at Hidden Meadow. Um, worked out very well, uh, although it was in the Berry Gazette and the East Quaggan Land Trust uh, put it out on their email list, but I never saw anything on the town website or the sign by the firehouse. So I don't know what happened with that. But it, it was a very good walk. Uh, who's responsible? Who, do you, who did you contact? Uh, Nate told me to just email him. And you did, and it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work, yeah. <laughs> okay. What was that for the town website or for the sign or both? Uh, whatever he wanted to do. Well, the sign is Katie. Yeah. But the web's, the web's you know, the email blast is Nate. And the sign, there's a form on on the town website that you have to fill out for anything you want to enter on the electronic board. Yeah, on the electronic board. Really? Yeah. Where on the website do we have? I don't know. I've never seen it, but I, I hear tell. <laughs> Susan, Susan told me. I blame it on her. <laughs> um, but yeah, Katie has told her that there is a form that they have to fill out, a simple form, making the request. So, okay. so the, um, 
I haven't planned one for June yet. Uh, we had talked about having one uh, at Malone where Bob or Mark would talk about what the trail was going to look like if we get the grant. And I don't know whether we want to wait and see if we get the grant first before we <laughs> start talking about it. I got a guess of it on uh, grant uh, date award. Come, we're getting pretty close now. Well, the. Um I mean, the official notification comes out when we went down to the yeah. the event on the coast there yeah. with yeah. Charlie. Uh, yeah, down in Sandwich. The Gulf. Um, so, so I think that was like mid July. Okay. I seem to recall. So, the, the, um, one reason why I don't mind postponing one at Malone is because the mountain world is just about to pop and. Got a trail called the Laurel Trail. It's got a lot of mountain laurel on it. It certainly does. <laughs> 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 Probably going to be hard to find the trail in the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, at uh, some point. <laughs> so we might do one there in mid June. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Mount well, Laurel is tough to clear. <laughs> Where would you think about start? Um, on New Tumbleton Road, it's not a very big parking area. There's uh, a little parking along the road. It's three, it's three spots. Yeah. The other thing to do is start on Mount Jeff, and let that would be quite a walk. That's park. A, that's a hike for on no. Mount Jeff Road or Mount Mount, Mount Jeff, Jeff Road, just yeah, north Mount across. Oh, yeah. oh, actually, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be horribly long if you parked at Red Oak and came across Link to get to Laurel. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm. right out, you can handle as many as you need. Oh, yeah. Is that what you meant by New Templeton Road? Is that right out? Yes. Oh, you're talking about the the DCR the, parking lot. The north lot. end of the Link Trail. On, on New Templeton Road. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, DCR right. parking lot and the Take the Link Trail. Yeah. That would work. Yep. Yeah, that's probably only, work. what, 15, 10, 15 minutes over to uh, Laurel. Yeah, would be a nice one. Then you could. could go up that onto Muzzy Ridge so it's a loop mm -hmm. uh, and then get over to Copper Mine and then back down. Is Copper Mine still Copper Mine or are we changing it? It's <laughs> still Copper Mine. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Yes. Have you uh, heard anything from anybody about using that at all? Using what? The trail that goes behind all those Well, yeah, it goes behind the... Oh, Red Oak. Red Oak goes Trail. behind all those new houses. On New Temple, on, uh, not New Mesa, uh, uh, French Road. Canesto, Canesto Hill? Yeah, I'm sorry, Canesto Hill, yes. Uh, well, I mean, I... Are those all on, off Canesto Hill, or is some on Red Oak? He's, he's, he's talking about the new houses yeah. on French Road yeah. 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 in Templeton. Yeah. Um, so that's all... Uh, and, and Canesto Hill Trail passes through their backyards. Okay. <laughs> or their property. Yeah. Um, so I pursued initial inquiries to see if anybody at the state uh, would be interested in approaching them to acquire that land or, or an easement, either one. And there was some preliminary interest. Um, there, that was it at the time when it was actually still owned by the developer. But he was in the process of selling it, and he had no interest in talking to me. <laughs> um, but we could now approach the landowners individually. And no, I am not actively moving that forward at this point. But there, there was a certain degree of interest in the state if we wanted to push it. But you haven't heard any complaints of someone saying shutting down access to their trail. Yeah. No, it's not that I'm aware of. It's like the Templeton Open Space Committee should be involved. It is in Templeton, mm -hmm. is it not? Uh, well, we moved yeah. to Trails, right? It's got to be in Templeton because they bought their property in Templeton. Yeah. So if they bought their property in Templeton and it's on that trail, it's going to be. Yeah, it goes. Yeah. Property in both towns. It's, yeah, yeah. That, the, You're right. Yeah, the section of trail that 
that's no longer available is all a temple. Yeah. Just barely. But it's usable. Well, I mean, it, yeah. just because of ownership. Yeah. Did you say there's a section of what? No, the, the section of trail that we're talking about is all in Templeton. Oh, okay. The, most of the trails in Hubbardston. Yeah. But there's a short section that crosses the town line. Oh, okay. And goes through these one or two of these parcels. But what do you say? Did you say it's not accessible? Well, we don't know that legally we're allowed to walk yeah. there anymore. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I didn't mean that it wasn't accessible for a wheelchair. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> but it's not. But it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are with that word accessible. <laughs> Mike? Yeah. To, before we close out, the Hubbardston hikers, uh, Tim, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, by the way, that hike was co led, and Tim also, um, while well, he was the other co leader, and we had some really knowledgeable folks from like DNR that jumped in. And there's a couple of interesting things that you don't normally see. And one of them, was this <laughs> the egg? The egg. <laughs> so this egg was out there, just sitting there, just oh, sitting there yeah. underground, oh, intact, underground. along the trail. Or so trees. subsequent, one of the gals that was along, uh, Brenda, she went and looked it up. We, there was all kinds of theories, uh, but I think she properly identified it as a barred owl egg. Really? It's the right size, the right color, the right shape, and even <laughs> the right surface texture. Mm -hmm. We checked all those things out. She found out that occasionally a barred owl will lay an egg on the ground, <laughs> not necessarily up in the trees in their normal ponds. Yeah. So that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, 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 poor, cool. that's poor for success of the egg if they lay it at, at tree level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was uh, cancer root that I think they used to be identified as saprophytes, uh, but they're in the same family as the Indian pipe. Mm -hmm. And we had not seen those there in past years, but this winter we did a very in, in, uh, aggressive invasive plant control and opened it up. And the first place that we had removed them was right where we found all these can't, and Tim's wife was the one that looked that up and identified it for us. There were two skulls found along the trail. Some people think they might have been plants. I have no idea how they, that could have happened or thought about that. Um, Look at the skulls. Skulls. You know, one was probably a porcupine, and the other one might have been Canid. Did Mike Perkins? Uh, I didn't look at that one so well either. Um, and then, uh, can pass that around. That wasn't there during the hike. Um, what was I looking at? When, well, I went back to get a photo of the egg and put the ruler on it and, you know, uh, tried to get some more facts about the egg. Cute little rascal. Yeah. I've seen those before. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody's got to get photos of wildlife besides <laughs> four moose in one photo, so we yeah. tried to get one, <laughs> one. Um, now, a little explanation on that. Yeah. Here, there's another photo here. Whoops. Mike, don't do that. Whoops. Somebody's there. How about that one? Is that better? Oh, yeah. Wow, I'm pretty close. Yeah, I'm pretty close. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Um, it's a painting. So the gal that helped identify the egg, she's been doing artwork, and we're collaborating on art in the woods or art in the wilderness. Ah. So the the beer was supposed to be up before the hike again. started, but uh, we, no kidding. it was only so much time. <laughs> Uh, but it's been on the trail and we're waiting for feedback. I took it in because it needed to be sealed and a little more work on it. But um, 
the idea is that you know the animals aren't always out there when you're out there like a lot of our hikes take place m midday we're not out there at dawn and dusk but we can have the out, uh, animals out there so that's a continuing collaboration uh, between a couple of the stewards for the preserves for the East Guadman Land Trust and uh, you might see more we might move them just like the, the stories in the woods yeah. we can put them on different trails at different times of the year like put the bear in the berry blueberry patch when, <laughs> did, you, did you say that's a painting yes yeah. How, how big is the, the bear's a painting. The rest of it is just natural foliage around. <laughs> how, how big is that painting? How, how big is it? Yeah. Um, it's uh, three foot high by three and a half, four foot long. It's pretty realistically mm -hmm. sized. Yeah. And I won't give it away, but she's working on another one. <laughs> and it's another predator animal. Boy, it, uh, it blends in extremely well. Yeah. Well, I, was yeah. Down, I was down on Henry's Trail. Two, three weeks ago. Where River and Nature Club was out there? Was that, did you go on that one? No. Yeah, okay. I was just out walking. And uh, it definitively answered the question of whether a bear shits in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> it did. It did. And it was some of the largest I've ever seen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, there's a bear along Lombard Road. It visits the house. It, uh, yet this past week, it killed. I think it was uh, uh, Sunday night, it got into someone's chicken coop, tore the door off, got a couple of the chickens. So um, This bear is called Mike Pitt, there's a story behind that, and the bear, the sow that's going along the road is uh, Teddy. So if you hear Lombard Road Bear, it's Teddy. <laughs> um, okay, to segue from the last Hubbardston hikers, I do have a suggestion for the next one. Um, I auctioned myself off at the East Quabbin Land Trust to lead a bog plant walk. It'll be at the, um, the Natty Brook Wildlife Management Area. It's right near where Calico and Cream used to be. There's a gate there. Yep. There's not a formal trail. What's the name of it? Natty Brook. Oh. Wildlife <laughs> okay. management area. I have to enunciate a little better. <laughs> and uh, although I'm doing this private tour, because that's what the people paid for as a fundraiser for the land trust, um, we could also do a Hubbardston hikers there because I'm very familiar with it. And the bog plants, the sundews are already out, at least two species of sundews. Um, the rose pogonia will be coming out in the next 10 days um, so I don't know how much in advance we have to put this out uh, the mountain laurel I have a whole photo scheme of all the things that bloom in about two weeks and it's gonna look really good out there in two to three weeks so it's a, a thought um, there's limited parking maybe we could get permission from Calico and Cream property owners, but you can get a few cars along the road there. So, and it's it's not a sanctioned trail, but from the gate in, it's pretty well maintained, and it's uh, partially paved. <laughs> partially paved. There's a, there's a section, and um, it's very level. Accessible. Very ex yeah, it's, <laughs> yes. Um, it's it's mostly dry until you get to the end. And the bog plants are there, but they're not in a typical bog, um, which makes it nice so you can kind of walk up to them and see them real easily. And there is a micro bog if people want to go down and actually step on the sphagnum moss and have that sinking feeling, you can actually uh, do that too. So just a, a suggestion. I'd be happy to um, uh, lead or co-lead uh, uh, Hubbardston Hikers Walk there in the next three weeks. Do you typically like to do Saturdays and supplant or Sundays or have we ever tried a Friday night or a Friday evening? Because it stays light out late. Um, I'm up for going at different times but if there's kind of a standard that there's an expectation 
I'm, I'm I don't good think with there's that. any expectation. Okay. How much in advance should we make the communication about when to go? Um, well, I get the Berry Gazette on Friday, um, Ooh, and I don't usually have a chance to read it before Saturday, so um, it really should be in the paper at least a week before the event. So the input, I know somebody who writes an a ongoing article, and she has to have her input in by Sunday night. Yep. So, okay, it's coming up. So it's about two weeks, basically. Right, right. And I don't know how much lead time the town needs because um, I don't know <laughs> what they do. They don't need, yeah. they don't need any lead time. Yeah. As long as they do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a fairly small group that's been going out, and I think even word of mouth will, you know. Get enough. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, I don't know. It would be cool to have 50 people, but I, I know parking can't support that. Um, but the trail would. So if there's quite a few in numbers, it's okay. We can, we can do that. And once again, it's flat out and back, um, you know, two hours plus or minus. Thank you. I love, love roast begonias. What's up? I thought I love, I love roast begonias. <laughs> it's a great, great flower. Will the sundew still be out in three weeks? Absolutely. Matter of fact, they'll probably be throwing up flower buds. Mm -hmm. The sundews will be out until early fall. Is my anger. What's the sun do? What, the, what kind oh. of? Oh, well, well <laughs> it's a carnivorous plant. Oh. One of um, the th three or four we have in Massachusetts. We have sundews, pitcher plants, and bladder warts, and maybe butter warts even. Gross begonias are a type of orchid. <clears throat> yes, mm. one of our native. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that would be great to see. That sounds good. Mm. Been easier walk than uh, uh, Laurel. And it just drives some people. But yeah. it's, oh, yeah, it's totally flat. There's the rose it. begonia. Laurel's oh, not God, bad, except for Laurel Trail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, this is kind of wet and grassy, it's okay, yeah. but it, it's it's gravelly, so you you don't. Um, so there's the rose blown. Mark, you already know that <laughs> that one. Oh yeah. And uh, th those are Buddy's legs in the background. <laughs> uh, then there's a lot, and I don't know if it's because of the acidity, but the mountain wall is very pink there. Oh, nice. Uh, there's green sundews. Only place I've seen green sundews in oh. the world is here in Hubbardston. They're located in the micro bog. These were all taken the same day, so that's why. So these were taken on June 16th. That's why I'm saying it's coming up quickly. Uh, those are round leaf um, sundews. Uh, more round leaf sundews. For those uh, ah bog laurel. So also blooming at the same time as the mountain laurel and the orchid. Uh, unidentified flower, so if anybody knows what that is, uh, please let me know. It, it almost looks a little bit like the gay wings, the, the fringed polygala, but it's not. Those, are, those just went by this past week, they're all gone. More rose pagonias there, same day, same place. Spatula leafed sundews. See, you didn't know you had all this stuff. Mm. And there's a spatula leaf sundew with a dragonfly captured in it. <laughs> so you don't see that every day. I can't promise that one. <laughs> that one was so random. So there's a that little tip of blue is what gave it away, you know, because they're not, they're down on the ground, 
And that's it. Oh, the Blue Brothers were coming along nicely. Thank you. Do we need to Thank vote you. on those? <laughs> <laughs> on what? Did, was that a motion? No. No, this was just a offer. <laughs> so the, the closest to the 16th, that's two weeks, Saturday, two weeks away, is the 18th. If you needed, if you wanted to do the two-week notice, that would be a Saturday. I would think you'd get better attendance on a Saturday. Just mm -hmm. Sounds like a good idea to me. I don't know. I'd, I'd actually, um, the two weeks notice is great for the Barry Gazette, but I don't know if we get that many people uh, through the Barry Gazette. Um, we, we actually have. Well, not a lot, but a right. couple of the walks we've asked people. Okay. The one that, um, the poetry walk over. Uh, oh, the Barry trees. Falls. Yes. Uh, when we asked yes. that question, a couple of them said, oh, yeah, we saw it in the Barry Gazette. Okay. So, but um, the reason is, is I almost think it's best to go the week before. Um, to actually see everything that you yeah, I'll, I'll be back out there to look. The trouble is those orchids, when they come up, they come up fast, and then they go away pretty fast. So <coughs> you almost can't, <coughs> you're, because I think that's one of the stars. I know the sundew, I know the sundews are going to be there, and there'll be lots of them. I already checked that out <coughs> a couple of times. So you're thinking that a week before would be a better thing, time-wise? I, if... Well, since that's the main purpose of the yeah, I mean that's one of the, <laughs> the big shows. You know, people will come for an orchid, um, but let me do this. Um, I'll get back to us all via email within 48 hours. Okay. I'll go back and look at <coughs> when I got the photos for the rose pagonias over a period of three years at different sites, and I'll go. Okay, well here's the earliest they appeared. And here's the latest appeared, and this is where they're at. And I will give a recommendation uh, for the two Saturdays that we've just talked about. Well, I mean, even if you do it that other weekend, the 11th, it still will be in the Berry Gazette on the coming <coughs> Friday. That's true. So, you know, if people are looking for something to do that weekend, there it is. Boom. Yeah. Right? A good point. And right. you could also communicate through the land trusts because a lot of people read their stuff. Well, they put out email blasts, right. which works really well. Yeah. Thank you. And it's not in place of the mountain laurel walk. It's just another additional walk. Yeah, because mount that that of the laurel trail is really a nice yeah. walk too. There's a lot of really good mountain laurel on this too. Mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> we were just out there on Sunday, and a lot of we saw 30 turtles, all painted turtles egg laying. I wow. think they'll probably be pretty wrapped up by then, but right now they're busy as hell. Mm -hmm. So to Tim's question on was there a motion? <laughs> Not we don't need a motion, but are, is that something you want to plan? We just do it? Yeah, oh I'm I will okay. do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Tim shaking his head on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it, are you good with that? Or, oh yeah. Okay. It's up to me. Okay. <laughs> Have, you, have yeah. you definitely scheduled your auction walk? That's why I need 48 hours, because I've got to give them, you know, everybody's waiting on when are the orchids, Mike, you know. Uh, <coughs> and now we are. Show. <laughs> right. No, I'm just complicated. <coughs> Mike, this time of year, it, um, I think an evening would be great. Um, we haven't done too many walks. This Hubberston Hikes thing just started last year. And right. Been, done very many when the sun set as late as it sets now so it doesn't have to be on a weekend which means you've got more flexibility in terms of timing relative to publicity yeah. and so on yeah, I okay and I, and I think it would be great to break it up so it's not all Saturdays and Sundays okay yeah, get different people. I will <coughs> I will go back I will look and come up with a recommended day <coughs> And I can sneak it into the I'll check, barrier. I'll check the date that I, I saw them. Some okay. Friend Gardner as well. Yeah. I mean, it's real easy because <coughs> I take pictures of them every year, so I've got the dates. Um, and I can get in the Barry Gazette via a friend that writes an article. So I know what her deadline is. 
and you know, I can wait till Sunday night to do that. Okay. Thank you. Good. Uh, let's see. Uh, trail loops. Closing, closing the loop on the trail loops. Um, the two uh, loop trails that we had talked about uh, on the Mount Jeff property, um, we have uh, uh, official approval uh, from them to go ahead, go forward with those. There was no issue on the short link um, or behind the chimney over to Gates Hill. Uh, when we uh, took the uh, we, we walked the, the proposed trail with Jan, uh, Danny, and there were two spots that were uh, pretty uh, traversable. I mean, there was no uh, real standing water issues, and this was after a very wet uh, uh, Friday uh, that we went out there, <coughs> after a very wet day that we went out there. And uh, so uh, there's a couple spots where we want to do some uh, uh, tri just over a very short section and I just explained the process for that and they had no problem with that and so uh, her mechanism and we talked about it uh, uh, on the walk uh, what would be sufficient and I said well if you just give us uh, affirmative action from an email this is what she had proposed actually so she sent that affirmative uh, answer so I uh, put together something, sent it to her, and then she said that was fine. So the next step will be to just finalize the uh, trail location of it. So, so that's a done deal. Great. Okay, and what I will do on that, that should go into uh, our, the official drive. So I'll create a folder on that with a communication with Danny and an actual copy of the email that she sent that said it's okay to do that. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's good. Um, <clears throat> uh, new business. Uh, uh, beach and ash tree protection. Um, there have been a few emails on, what is it, beach leaf disease? Is that what it's called? Yep. Um, and actually, I was over in uh, Bolton, and uh, on a couple of occasions, uh, once with Steph in the end of April or something, uh, to look at trails up there relative to some, to some bridge work they may want to do. And uh, they're pretty devastated with them. The last bore there, uh, much, much more so than what we've seen around here. I don't think there was a healthy ash tree in the group that we saw. Um, and same deal with uh, beech leaf disease. I mean, the leaves on every beech tree that I saw were all shriveled up. Um, and I had uh, reported that <coughs> in a Vermont Land Trust uh, webinar that Steph and I attended, <coughs> the, uh, uh, there are at least some uh, uh, potential solutions to the uh, ML ash borer that they're exploring in uh, uh, Vermont. Uh, so I contacted somebody from uh, Vermont Land Trust. I didn't have much success with uh, Paul Catanzaro. Uh, and he, Paul's usually pretty good, and I know him a little bit. Um, but uh, so I sent a, a note off to the folks at Vermont Land Trust to see uh, what they were doing, more specifics on what they were doing up there. And then I know Tim wanted to have some time relative to talking about beech leaf uh, disease, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks. So, I, if, in case people didn't have a chance to read those links that I, I sent around, there is a, 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 a phosphate fertilizer called uh, phosphite. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a salt of phosphate um, that they've had some success with in preventing beech leaf disease from killing beech trees. The, the beech leaf disease was first discovered in Ohio about 2012 or 2014 um, and that's where they've, they've done some of this work and it involves mixing up a solution of uh, <clears throat> 
this um, phosphite material in water and then um, watering the tree, tree with it. Um, it the, the work done in Ohio was done with, with small trees, um, just two to four inches in diameter, um, maybe a little bigger. But they, they, had a, they have a formula for uh, one uh, pint of solution for every two inches of diameter of the tree. Um, I guess how many inches of diameter I estimated the big beach at <laughs> Mount, Mount Jeff at? About 96. Uh. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Um, so that would be about 12 gallons of the solution uh, with about one and a half gallons of the phosphite in it. Um, online you can buy the phosphite for, you can get two and a half gallons for $135, which isn't too bad. Um, the hardest part is you need to somehow get 20 gallons of water back there and mix it up and try to get it to soak into the ground around the tree twice during the summer um, and presumably you have to do it every year although after five or six years maybe the rest of the beech trees will be dead and there won't be any more nematodes around. I didn't catch into our meeting again. What's that? So somebody's bringing pets into our meeting again. Yeah. Pets? Pets. Pets. An inchworm. Oh. Okay. oh, oh, oh. Um, <coughs> so you need 12 gallons twice? Over the summer? Is yeah. How close to the tree? Well, <coughs> certainly under the drip line, uh, the guidance that I read said not right at the base of the tree because it, it's a very concentrated fertilizer and you don't want to burn the tree yeah. roots. So I think the ideal thing, would, do, do you know what uh, tree gators are they, they got them on the newly printed trees along the sidewalk here yeah, on the like green, oh, yeah. green bags yeah like they, <coughs> that's what they're called tree gators huh? you, 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 where you've got a small tree to tie it to you you just tie the bag to the tree fill the bag with water and it, the bag has little holes in the bottom so the water slowly dribbles <laughs> into the soil to oh, irrigate the tree those. <laughs> so that way a you make a giant one? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, you'd probably use several of them to go around the tree, but that way a person doesn't have to stand there slowly watering the tree, waiting for the water to soak in. Um, so we, well, I thought you said you didn't want it right at the base of the tree. No, you don't. So we, these, you know, this. for this, for applying this stuff, you'd have to put in stakes and tie the tree gators. Okay, out to of stakes. the stakes. Okay. Yeah. So. You know, maybe maybe five feet away from the trunk, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And you need 12 gallons of solution and 12 gallons of phosphate. 12 gallons of solution, okay. one and a half gallons of phosphate. How much does that cost? Um, well, two and a half gallons is 135 dollars, so about 100 dollars. About, uh, about 80 dollars. 80 dollars. Hmm. I have a spare 55 gallon drum. Huh? And, and oh, for the water. And not for the water. And, uh, and we still have to get the water to the tree. But we could use. We're talking about the Mount Jeff tree. Yeah. Yeah. But we could. Could those roll gators it? be filled? You can roll and then it. transport it. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Although, how, how much do they hold? Well, you wouldn't want to fill them up. Probably. I mean, well. He said twelve I mean, gallons. They hold three or four <laughs> gallons yes. each. You can roll the drum. So, we could and hook a hose up to it. I have a spade four or five it. of those gators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. With a couple of gallons in each. Yep. So, could be done. Wouldn't take too long. Mm -hmm. So you can roll, the, roll the drum up to the tree. We've got a spigot to attach a hose to. Roll a fifty-five gallon drum full of water. With only twelve, <laughs> oh, it only has twelve gallons in it. Oh, oh, oh! I see. Okay. Oh, and fill the things with that. Well, for that matter, where the tree is, you can they can back the truck up to it. <laughs> I'm yeah. serious. And have a hose, because that's what I use for water in some of the bushes that are out away from the house. So I fill that up and, 
have it on the back of the truck and have a hose to it. I like that idea. Right. And, <coughs> and then just somewhere between the, the 55 gallon drum and the tree, we have to mix in one and a half gallons of phosphorus. Why, why wouldn't you mix it in the drum before? Well, it depends on whether you want it in the drum. It's pretty corrosive. It's a plastic drum. Oh. Oh, but you use that. You'd have to rinse it out pretty well. Yeah. To use it again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well it's well, feasible we'll for one we'll tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've got thousands of trees. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about saving this one tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the, thousands of <coughs> trees. Well, that tree would, I mean, that'd be a tremendous loss, really. That's yeah. just yeah. a beautiful tree. And, and two times in one year, do you do that every year? Um, yeah, probably. The, the, Right, right now, there are a lot of live beech trees in the woods, and so there's lots of beech trees for the nematodes to feed on. If those trees mostly die in the next five years, there won't be much food for the nematodes, and we might not have to treat the, the tree that we've kept alive anymore because there won't be any more nematodes around to attack it. So the nematodes would die out if their food source is gone. Yeah. Most. I mean, what's what's uh, any prediction on the uh, the follow up relative to this? No, I, mean, uh, I don't think I'm anybody not. knows yet. It's too new. Have you uh, have you looked to see whether anybody has indicated whether European beaches are susceptible? They are, according to what I've read. Yeah, both European and Asiatic. Is there any signs of uh, uh, affection or infection on? I think so. Some of the leaves look a little weird. They they don't. It, it's not in the whole tree by a long shot, compared like like it is in the trees at Malone. Um, and maybe what's wrong with the leaves that I'm looking at is something else. Um, it's a it's a. It's nowhere. It's not affected anywhere near as much as most of the other beech trees. How long does it take the the nematodes, uh, the disease, to kill a tree? About five years, in Ohio. Um, Even for a young tree. Yeah. Really. And then I can't remember what. Whether when you know, usually you can't kill a beech tree if if the top dies or gets cut, it sends up root sprouts. Um, I can't remember whether these sprout or not. The when, once a uh, once the number toads get into a tree is uh, what is what does the uh, phosphite do? <clears throat> I'm not sure the mechanism is understood. But does it does it kill the nematodes? It either kills it or, or, or makes the not make, taste good. <laughs> makes them uh, not want to eat the, the leaves. Um, yeah, it's a my guess. But it's a fertilizer, right? Well, not exactly. Um, you said it's, it's very corrosive. It's, 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 it's a phosphate. Right. It's right. It's phosphate. It has one less oxygen atom on it than a than a phosphate molecule. Phosphate P2O3 is PO3 PO4, yeah. right. And phosphite is PO3. PO3. Yeah. And so it doesn't, uh, the, the, the plant that, uh, <coughs> that absorbs it um, does not convert it to phosphate and therefore it does not get used in cellular respiration or photosynthesis. The uh, you know the Krebs citric acid cycle and the uh, ATP adenosine triphosphate it's not it, it's not involved in any of those metabolic processes within the plant um, but it's it's absorbed and it's in the in the sap and apparently it's because uh, they eat the, the leaves right. Yeah, they're, they're eating the inside of the leaves, actually, and they they eat sap. the leaves while they're still in the bud. They're eating during the winter. So how how long have they been treating the trees in Ohio? I don't know. Maybe th three years. 
Weird, so not sure when they started. So that might not be enough to, for them to have any significant yeah. results. Now, apparently this phosphate, phosphite has been used for a while by arborists to try to promote tree health. Yes, aside from these uh, nematodes that are attacking the peach, it's been used in other situations. Is it bad to get on your skin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you put it down, do you have to keep people from being in that? Well, you want to get it into the soil, and once it's absorbed in the soil, unless, unless somebody goes under there and starts pawing around with their bare hands. How about animals doing that? <coughs> yeah. I suppose well, they might. If, if you were going to use these uh, tree gators, it would be in the tree gator for a while before it soaked into the ground, right? Yeah. That's a pretty public spot. Mm. You wouldn't have to, I mean, the, I haven't seen any suggestion of using the tree gators. That was just my idea. Oh, yeah. the, an, another way to do it is to drill some holes. D d dig a little hole or drill some holes um, and pour it into the hole and yeah. stand there while it gets absorbed. I mean, 12, 12 gallons around the circumference of that tree. Yeah. There, there's a lot of soil there. That, will absorb yeah. it pretty quickly. And so you, I don't, it doesn't seem like you're talking, so how much money, you do this twice a year? Yep. So the amount of phosphate would be somewhere in the range of a, a little more than a two and a half gallon container you're talking about? Yeah, three, yeah, you need three gallons a year, so. What did I say, yeah, so you're talking a few, couple, few hundred dollars. Then. Yeah. It's mostly the time and the, you know, getting the bucket of water over there and mixing the stuff up and pouring it into the soil. Well, certainly the tree is worth the effort. There's no question about that. I mean, for that, that's not a lot of money to save, potentially save that tree. So I guess it's just a matter of if there's, if there's uh, uh, moderate to significant risk associated with that tree, then seems like a, a good idea. Yeah. Well, from what I've seen, how fast the beech leaf disease is infecting other trees in the state. It's only been in Worcester just, County. Just from a, last year to this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huge change. <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think time is of the essence, and based on their experience in Ohio, it's going to kill the trees. All right. <clears throat> you want to... A motion or something on this? Is there any more discussion on it? I mean, it sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, I mean, at some point we'll have to have a vote to approve the reimbursement on the actual expense, but we don't have the real number tonight. So, but yeah, I'm all for plowing yeah. forward. <laughs> we have to do it. Yeah. And because it's at Mount Jeff, it can uh, just come out of the gate. It can <laughs> come out of the, yeah. Yeah, we don't, need to, account. we don't need to worry about getting approval from Parks and Rec right. or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, how about uh, let's just do a, a, a motion to proceed with the project, uh, and subsequently then we'll have a vote to uh, uh, to approve the uh, funds. So we so I'll, that. I'll move to uh, pr proceed with uh, applying the phosphate to save the beech tree. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second on that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Very good. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, oh. that, uh, we could save that tree, and obviously it seems like there's high risk here. That'd be phenomenal. It would be a huge loss. Jeez. That would be sad to see that mud, that huge tree. Yeah. For, for 12 gallons, I, I really don't think we need to worry about the tree gators approach. Yeah, I mean, right. That's an additional expense. This is this is this is the way that I treat the hemlocks in my yard. Uh huh. Um, and I just I just scrape out a little trench around yeah. and pour pour in with a five gallon bucket, twelve gallons on that circumference. Right. It's just going to go right in. <laughs> you're you're not going to need to so what worry you, about slow. What do you do to save the hemlocks? What's this against the uh, the woolly algae? The woolly algae. Yeah. yeah. And what do you do? Um, it's a treat. I always get this word wrong. 
Um, Imazapir? No. Uh, I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a chemical. It's, it's, a chemical. It's, a chemical. It's, it's a chemical that you mix up your water. Mm. And you just pour it into a little trench around the, each tree that you're trying to save. And it soaks it up it's and it protects them for like two or three years. Yeah, wow. It's a, it's a systemic uh, yeah. Yeah. treatment. In the, in the treatment that, yeah. Something they, they're, they're not. <laughs> well, I guess they are scale insects, so it's an insecticide. Um, you, you haven't, um, there, you haven't seen any other potential uh, cures or. Treatments? Yeah, the, you, there you can spray the trees. Um, talk about it. It's a fungicide. I didn't even read very far into it because <clears throat> to spray a tree like that. You're talking probably a minimum of two thousand dollars for somebody with a hydraulic sprayer mounted on their truck to drive back there and spray the entire canopy. You get Todd's drone <laughs> <laughs> with the big tank on it. <laughs> well, for that you don't need a lot of water, yeah. it's, but you but you need you need a high pressure pump to uh. make a fine mist. Uh. Um, two I also, drones. <clears throat> I know. <clears throat> yeah, I think. Have you seen the? Well, you, everybody knows we got a lot of beech trees in Malone, right? And they're all sick. But I looked at I've I've taken some uh, measurements over there, and for the 20 acres between the stone wall where uh, originally Destiny's Garden was proposed, that's kind of roughly where the beach starts. If you can picture the, the trails out there between there and Dotty Rock. There's about a 20-acre area, and that's that's where most of the beach are at Malone. Um, only 26% of the trees are actually are beach. So even if they all die, it's still going to be pretty well forested. Good news for maples. <laughs> yes, <laughs> maple and birch and some oaks. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, Gates Foundation cleanup. It could have been under or whatever. Um, so, got up there. Uh, the foundation came out uh, uh, relatively easily with the backhoe and the tractor. Put it into five or six piles. I don't know if anybody went by there. In the process, too, we came across a, a bit of uh, trash. Uh, Pile that up, two or three tires. Some scrap uh, beer bottles and oh, one big <laughs> aluminum sign and I don't know how that got up there but that was uh, uh, down at the end past the big beech tree um, that's where uh, at least one of the tires were um, at any rate I left the stuff in about six uh, six or seven piles and then got a hold of Travis uh, and he had been interested in it because they were looking for, they were looking for uh, concrete without any steel in it uh, to, to mix up a batch of uh, road material mm. uh, and they have a machine come in to make that so that fell in line with wow. what they were looking for perfect and planets uh, aligning <laughs> um, and so I sent him a note and he got up there within a day or two and did a nice job cleaning it up. I don't know if anybody's been up there, but they did a nice job cleaning that yeah, up. Um, the, uh, and the, um, the concrete that came out, you have the stone foundation and then off of that in a number of different places, they had made these little extensions where they used concrete uh, in places, most of it was in the front. There was the a couple front, front porch area. That's most of what you got, yeah, right? Yeah, where they had just done some porches, and then there was some stuff out in the back. Um, got all of that. The only place that they didn't get a material out is one strange collection of concrete off the very end of the stone wall. Uh, parallel to the road that's about 30 feet of a combination of solid stone and concrete and in some places there's uh, 
place where there was a, a flue liner of some sort because it's round and so you can see this smooth surface and the, the stretch is about uh, four feet wide, three to four feet wide, and it goes out 30 to 40 feet, whatever that was. I have no idea what was some massive chimney that just fell in that direction. Although there's square edges to it, so that yeah. doesn't even make sense. So that uh, some of that's still there. Some of it would be good for blocking off access uh, to where we relocated the gate. So at some point I'll, I'll move that out. At any rate, the the, con the concrete mess that was there that uh, made it impossible to get up and mow around the foundation is all cleared up. Um, it's not uh, possible to mow that right now just because it's all uneven and a big steep uh, 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 steep drop-offs of a c couple feet in places and stuff like that. So my recommendation for the next phase of that would be to bring some sandy fill in and smooth that out and then uh, put a top soil, a top finish of maybe uh, four inches of loam or something on top of that. I don't know what the thoughts are. That's what I see is what ought to be done next. It would make it a pretty simple process to smooth that out so then you can just mow right up around the foundation. Um, a good place to get the sandy fill at a really extremely reasonable cost is from Walt Lawrence. Uh, I don't know if you, anybody knows Walt Lawrence, but he's in Templeton, not far from the Hubbardson line. Uh, and, and you can get a truckload, a 20 yard truckload of uh, some really nice uh, sandy uh, clay mix material for. $200 total that's included in material and delivery. And so, uh, and the loam I asked. Uh, and, and you would spread it? Huh? And you would spread and it? And I would spread it, yeah. And that stuff spreads great. I mean, it's just really beautiful to spread that stuff out. I bought uh, a couple truckloads for him, and I'm getting five more for smooth out some areas in the field that had been forested. Um, by uh, Ray Sawyer, the a lot of places where there were uh, skidder ruts and other ruts out there that need to get smoothed out. Um, and that's what I see. And then at some point in the future, and, and the folks that were up there, Rick and Tim, we were talking about the inside. I mean, oh, we came across one stairway. I don't know if folks had noticed one stairway, but it was kind of hidden because uh, with the brush around it, the, in the, in the process, I cleaned out quite a bit of the brush that was up there, uh, up close to the stone wall. So there's not much except some stubble that's left up there. But when we cleared out the brush, uh, in fact, Tim went down the stairs. Did you go down the stairs there, Tim? <laughs> there's a set of stairs up there that go down into the basement on one spot. So, huh. um, But it might be interesting to see what we could do as a another phase of cleaning that up like cutting it and maybe using some herbicide to kill the growth and then put a fabric over it and then maybe crush down you know, uh, that would <coughs> inhibit uh, vegetation growth down in the inside the foundation that's a that does not that's a project for another year um, so if uh, uh, if somebody wants to make a motion to Go ahead uh, with the uh, sandy fill and loam. Yeah, that would be good. So move up, up to up to like six eight hundred bucks or something. Um, let's see. I think it would take uh, uh, two loads of sandy fills. So that'd be four hundred dollars, and then uh, less than a, a load or something of uh, the loam. The loam would cost a little bit more. So uh, I would say at six hundred dollars max. If we don't do it now, this brush will just grow back. Yeah, so yeah. It'd be, it's, it's not bad right now. So if we get that done, then that'll make it uh, pretty easy. And that's an easy thing to do, just the transitions. Just if you, if you smooth off what's there, there's like a little plateau that was underneath one of the uh, uh, porches or whatever was there. Um, it would make it really easy and smooth to, to uh, negotiate a more all around now. Well, Bob, what's the... Um 
purpose of the loam. So the grass will grow. So we bit. want grass there. Well, if you don't put grass there, something's going to grow. So if you don't do that, then you're going to put down sure. uh, just a, a, a fabric yeah. that's going to inhibit growth and then crush stone on it or something. I don't know. It seems to me the easiest way to maintain that now. Uh, that's what I was growth. wondering. It's, it's just if you just keep mowing it now, the growth okay. won't. Uh, okay. The mowing will take care of the growth. So also, so also out of the Ryder Fund. Um, did you make the motion, Rick? Yes, I did. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can I amend the motion also to? Too late. <laughs> you can make a new motion, though. Oh well. Um, well, I guess that's about the fence, too. But I was going to suggest we include gas for you for your three days' work up there okay. in, the, in, the, in the reimbursement. Well, that's okay. Um, let's see. Oh, it's part of the effort up there. Okay, so we took care of the foundation. We're done with that. But also the, the posts for the gate that was up there, those were all rotted. But uh, when we looked at uh, replacing those uh, gates, right in that particular area, it's, the, uh, the water situation is a little bit unique up there. The, uh, uh, there was some, a significant amount of brush that I hauled out with a backhoe, and then I, I had to grapple with me, and I took three or four grapple loads uh, and went out back with them and sort of downhill but then way over to the right and there's a pile there's a pile of brush that's 12 to 15 feet high and 10 feet in diameter of stuff that came out of there you know where the birdhouse is up uh, there's a birdhouse that's uh, installed in that so if you're standing at the gate and looking out back about 80 to 90 feet out there was a, a birdhouse and then there's a little hollow right around in behind that. And I said, oh, that's a good place to put the, uh, the brush in. It'd be good for uh, a little critters to, to hide mm -hmm. and biodiversity type stuff. So. Yeah. yeah, rabbits like the one up at Milan. They really <laughs> created that. <laughs> what is um, the purpose of the gate? The gate was to try and, well, what happened uh, a few years ago, uh, vehicles were going out back there and spinning tires and stuff like that and one of them uh, had gone up there maybe in spring and it, it gets really wet up in that area gotcha. and uh, and so they made some ruts that were like okay. feet deep and so right. at that point in time that's when Jassy was uh, uh, head of the open space and uh, so that we decided well let's put a, a gate there to keep at least trucks out of there. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, it, uh, that's been pretty good. There hasn't been too much, maybe a four wheel or something occasionally. But um, So at any rate, as you look at that, what happened when we replaced the gate <coughs> to the right hand side, pretty much where the gate was, if you go right straight behind it, that was pretty soft material, very soft material. But if you moved it uh, about six or seven feet to the left, it, the, the density and firmness of the uh, base there was significantly better. And I know just when I was making the trips with the tractor with a, uh, a whole bunch of brush, uh, if I didn't stay to the left and pick a pretty decent route, uh, there were places where it was really soft going through there. So we moved the gate uh, over to the left and then we put in a couple more posts uh, that block it off uh, almost over to the woods. Now when I get back up there to move that, I'll take some of that big rubble uh, chunks that are probably 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds each and just finish off a couple blockages to the right hand side. And on the left hand side, it goes right up to a tree and we, we put a post, that we had a tree and a post and we left a small opening, three feet or so, uh, for a bicycle or people to get through and then a post uh, where the end of the gate was. Or a horse. And then a uh, <laughs> uh, post and then a couple posts at the end. And those posts are relative to reimbursement. Uh, Tim had a project that he was working on and miscalculated a little bit. <laughs> he ended up with uh, several 
six by six uh, posts that were available. So those turned out to be good because the, the posts that were there were rotted. So we uh, took those in anticipation that we could get some reimbursement for that. Um, so everything, the, the fence, the gate, and everything has all been uh, relocated, reinstalled, and whatnot. So, um, and that all came out good. I know, did you, did you figure out what the, the cost No, was? I haven't looked it up yet. Did you say the rider was at three, 3,000 or 4,000? Four, Four, 41 something. Forty-one twenty-five thirty-two. Roughly, what are you talking? A couple, few hundred dollars? Oh, less than that. Maybe, maybe a hundred. Um, well, we want. Uh, how about somebody want to make a motion along the lines of to, uh, Tim can send in uh, the, the cost for the lumber that we've ripped. Because besides the posts, he also had some long two by fours and stuff. Yeah. So we use those for rails to connect on the far mm -hmm. side. Uh, to, to block it off. So there's a top rail and a mid rail. You know, somebody can crawl through here, but nobody's going to drive through yeah, there. Roll, roll it all together with the phosphite. Gates, uh, Gates Homestead Improvement uh, Project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. You want to do that? Do we need so, a motion for that, or are we all set? Right. Let's uh, vote to amend the motion for the uh, project for the. Uh, Phosphite to include reimbursement for Tim for the gates. Gate. That sounds good. I like that. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. For that? We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Excellent. That's a good way to capture that. Um, uh, spring trail maintenance. I think, uh, how, how are we doing on uh, spring, uh, on trail status? Uh, I know obviously the, the Beaver Project, that's next, uh, when, I, when I go up to Gates Hill, maybe I'll come back so I can uh, pack the tractor down at the bottom of the hill where the Beaver Pond is and work on that. Um, the, uh, uh, anything else uh, outstanding? The, the, the minutes mentioned a tree down on the uh, no pond trail, tree across the trail. In the minutes from Coming down to Crystal Brook, you mentioned. Uh, I haven't seen it, but. Um, so it was real close to where the flooding. Yeah, I mean, did, did you guys take out something? Uh, you you near cleared the, out a tree, but that was on Conesto Brook I Trail. Took, I, took, yeah. I cleared one on Conesto Brook. Oh, okay. You was that I think one? that was oh, the tree. That was the one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. And um, then there was the, the bridge. The bridge. The hole in it. Yep. That was yep. But the, um, about a week ago, or maybe less, uh, I bumped into somebody um, who bicycles there. He was he was parked on Mount Jeff right at this trailhead for Old Mill Trail, um, and he had a chainsaw. He said he was going down to do some clearing on on that trail. On the uh, Mill Pond Trail. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if bikers were using that now. Yeah. Maybe he's making it so we got some us. free help. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean they always they always main stuff, maintain stuff over on Laurel. On the north side, yeah. Laurel. Was it the bikers? Copperus, yeah. Yeah, in a good way. It, 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 it's in a good way now, and, and, and it, it, this is all in a good stuff, but that's that's the kind of thing. He probably at least, I don't know if you see this person again, he ought to just at least let us know that he's doing anything right. We I mean, want to just be aware that somebody's out. No? All right, I'll vote for that. Enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah. said. Have anybody oh, yeah. had a jam chance to look at the bridge, though? On that? That's what so, I was going to ask about. What's the status of yeah, that bridge? I, I, think, I think Steph and I have both looked yeah. at it. Yeah, <laughs> you sent around those pictures. Or did you just send pictures to Bob? Did you go to everybody? I thought I saw, I saw pictures. I, I had it, taken some. I thought it went to everybody. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I thought it went to everybody, too. I didn't see it. So we still need to or fix maybe that? maybe it's just I had pictures. Yeah. No, you had pictures. Is it is it safe or blocked off or something so that 
Um, uh, it's hard to block it off. It's you can safe, walk across it's safe it. enough for walking. Yeah, oh. you can walk across it. You could bike across it. There's plenty of room for both, but um, I it, don't know. It should I be on the repair right list, so we'll... Yeah, it needs to be fixed. I'll, ta I'll take a look at that. What I've done in several places right now, I did uh, uh, a 5 by 60 foot redecking job for Upton. Um, and then we redecked the Canesto, and that has come up well. Mm -hmm. So I'll take a look at the timbers underneath the, uh, the whatever they are, 4 by 4 or 6 by 6 is Mike. Uh, I do have some material from other projects that was well, excess material or something. So I'm quite sure I got a piece that would just cover that totally and just resolve mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah. I, th a, I, think the, uh, I think the underlying parts are fine. I think yeah, and that's, I think that's, that's what happened in these other jobs. I think it's, it's just a, the two by six deck that's Yeah, and you just put, this, put this, <laughs> the uh, fiberglass grating on top of it and it makes a phenomenal solution. All right, so that's a tentative solution for that that we'll get down to. Um, any other business? Uh, had something arisen prompting your inquiry about Chapter 61, right of first refusal? No. That you, that you sent around tonight? Uh, no, but that was just in, in uh, uh, nothing has happened, but relative to uh, potential uh, land acquisition activities or something. Uh, a lot of the parcels uh, that are beautiful, just open land that are but state forests, etc., are, are Chapter 61 lands. Yeah. And so we want to make sure we get notified in a timely manner. Yeah. That's all. I, I wasn't sure if something had uh, no. uh, transpired because, I mean, that, that of course was really what prompted your whole. Um, evaluation project yeah. Yeah. was when Katie came to us and said, "If we get a, for, you know, if we get a notification that something's coming out of chapter, yeah. how are you going to advise us?" Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the select board's aware of, or was aware of it anyway. At that point, yeah. it wouldn't hurt, wouldn't hurt to implement some more formal. Uh, yeah. Procedure for how town yeah, handles I, I it. Agree. Some yeah, of the, the from what uh, Trisha Center runs, some of the boards uh, like legally have to be notified. It was uh, select, select board, Concom, yes. select board, planning. planning board, and I think one other is board of assessors and the agriculture assessors. Yeah, was it not open space? Yeah. Well, open no. spaces, yeah, oh. but that they're part of the concom, right? Are we part of concom? No, no, no. no. We're not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I thought we reported to them. No. We we, we work with them in conjunction with the they have the Lord. they have the lead on some of our conservation land. But we work with them because we actually implement the maintenance of them. And so, but they are the ones that are identified as the, I don't know, the, the, the town organization uh, in, in charge of the land. Well, in this model town procedure for exercising right of first refusal, the Open Space Committee is listed separately from the CONCOM anyway. It's, it's CONCOM, Planning, Open Space, Board of Assessors, and Agricultural Commission, if active. Yeah, well, where was that from? This is from a Paul Cotton Zero publication. Oh, 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 oh. Called Connecting People and Partners. A oh, I know, yeah. That, 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 yeah that's the document center. I didn't get to open that, but that's at the end of that document you sent me. Yep. Out. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's just the model, so that's I don't not know the way if, that our town if, if we wanted to make it uh, such in Hubbardston that we also were to be officially notified. I don't know what we would have to do to change that. Uh, it just needs to be an understanding with Nate and the select board. I'd say we write up a process okay. using that model or whatever, send it to them, ask them to approve it. Somebody want to write that up? You want to write that up? Sure. Right. My, my only question on all that is, it, it is a law, the people that are, 
have their property in Chapter 61 are required to report to those entities in town. But do they all know that? I mean, well, you got a lien on your property that refers to it. I think it's well, explained I to you when you put it into Chapter 61. Well, then no, I understand, but so oh. some of this stuff's been, oh. like the Kelton property's been in Chapter 61 since 1986. He lives in Indianapolis. If if he decides to sell the land, yeah. well, they can't they can't sell it until the lien comes off of it. <laughs> the, you and, get so he'd find out when they did this. It, it depends on this. what Chapter 61. But if you're in Chapter 61 uh, B, open space and recreation, and those are actually two separate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you get an, an annual notification. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. That because you have to be approved every year. The assessors receive that. I, I happen to know because the land's been in since the late 80s. You said 86. I don't know when Chapter 61 was implemented, but it was sometime in the mid 80s, yeah. I think. And uh, so every year we get notified okay. and we have to resubmit. Yeah. But I don't know if that's the same for Chapter 61 Forestry and 61A no, Agriculture. Ten, I think that's good. can stay in for 10 years and you don't yeah. redo it every it year. It does recommend that you come back and tell the town under forestry, because I read that one because somebody told me the same thing. I said, well, it's different for um, 61B, because we do get notified every year. And you're right. I mean, there, it is a lien, basically, or yeah, on the property. so. At some point, there would be a stop. Oh, you didn't notify us, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, it would it would be the prospective buyer's attorney saying, "No, we're not interested in buying your property because there's a lien on it." Nobody down here needs to know about that conversation. So it's I mean we but we can't yeah, control that. But it's the town holding the lien. So it's not going away <laughs> until they well, get themselves square under yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't no one would buy it with a lien on it, is what you're saying. You have to accept the the lien and it would be transferred. You can do that. And then there wouldn't be any notification probably required. It's when you're gonna take it out of chapter that it becomes the issue. The problem is, and I've been kind of following this because uh, our property is in Chapter 61, is that what happens if it goes through and the town doesn't notify the rest of the boards well, and that's why committees? The process. Exactly. Yeah. I totally concur that that needs to be cleared up because you can go back over the last two and a half years that I've been going to the select board meeting and there's been a, a, a definite improvement and difference in how they treat Chapter 61. And the open space was part of that when you put together an internal open space kind of process to prioritize things and whatnot so that the open space committee knew uh, how they wanted to treat it. But it may not, uh, the, the rest of the board's committees and commissions may not have taken it uh, to heart the same way the open space did. No way, I just say that. <laughs> anyway, I'll, so I'll, I'll write up something and send it around for everybody to take a look at and comment on and, and then so we we'll take it to the select board? Then we, yeah. One of, the, one of the things that's not in the this model procedure is being prepared for a parcel to be offered to the town. Um, the, f the fact that we've been doing this parcel evaluation process is is very helpful and I, I think the procedure ought to include the town being aware of what parcels are under 61 and um, knowing something about those parcels and how important they are to remain as open space in town. Why are you smiling? And ideally, it, that we have a $2 million fund available so that 
That's all. We can operate within the 120 day time period. Yeah. <laughs> well, I completely concur with what Tim was saying, and I've watched us, I'm not going to say stumble along, but um, I think that the process needs to be understood. And part of that, um, just because they used to have the 61 ch chapter pamphlets right over there. I don't know mm -hmm. where they went. But not a lot of people know that Chapter 61B actually has two separate subcategories under it. It would be nice as if we knew what Chapter 61 the property was held in, because it makes a difference. Under 61B open space, it's basically you leave it undeveloped completely, and you can post that land and not provide public access. That's allowable. That was mistold to me three years ago when I started to investigate it. Uh, the, the assessor um, provided in, in ac inaccurate information. Under 61B recreation, you can have the horse farm, the kayak livery, uh, model airplane, I, I, there's a whole list of things you can do. And the only way you can um, prevent public access, you can't post under that unless you have like a club that pays fees. There's a fee to belong to a group. Like for example, uh, Pinecrest, the Pinecrest uh, Homeowners Association, they have a big chunk of property, oh by the way it abuts our property, um, that is in chapter 61 and if they desire, they haven't done it, they could post it because they have an annual membership fee or whatever they call it, homeowners association. So I share that only because I've researched it several times and I'm pretty sure I'm accurate in everything I've mentioned. <laughs> Okay. Anything else? Next meeting. Oh, wait. Oh, something else. Tim has his oh, Tim? Uh, no, I was going to move to a chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, next can, meeting, uh, June 27th. That's the last Thursday of the month. Is that okay with folks? Or? Okay. We, we, I just want to mention I, I looked at all my past photos. And this for the, the orchid, um, the earliest photo I had was 11 June, and the latest one was 5 July. Those may not all be for Natty Brook uh, Wildlife Management Area, but if, if it's the somewhere from mid-June to late June, I think that's a good window uh, to go and see many of these things good. that I talked about tonight. Good. So that would so it's not like the 18th might, yeah, might fall with Or at least sometime that week. What, what was it sounds like the 18th might work. 18th, and what Saturday. day of the week do we think? Which is what you were talking about as a yeah. Saturday. That's a Saturday, but if it, it could be any day, yeah. yeah. I think that was the day. Okay, I'm looking at June, I don't know what year this, my calendar says, but it says <laughs> June 18th is a Tuesday. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, well, whatever, whatever Saturday in that vicinity. Uh, right. If, if you well, if you unfortunately, Saturday, the next works. Saturday is. Uh, oh, you're right. I was looking at July. Okay. Uh, the 22nd of June. Something. I don't know what I'm not going to be available <laughs> that I weekend. Was it's the solstice weekend, and I always take off and do some. This should have been silenced. Maybe you get signal. I don't. Yeah, that's what I want. I have to a know. special phone. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove to you guys that this is on silence. I, I move we adjourn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I move to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor. All right. <laughs> it says, look at that stuff. Do not disturb. All right. On. All right. I know, I, know it's, I know it's late. Uh, can I hold people for another couple minutes? Yeah, I'll stay. Is there money involved? <laughs> do you, do you yes, buy the quite, first round?